All right, so now we are back in solving this maximization problem. So remember, uh, this is an extensive form game. And in fact, this optimization problem incorporates this idea of uh, sequential rationality. How so? Well, here, this is the first uh, sort of movers, uh, a, a sort of uh, um, uh, optimization problem, maximize its profit. But subject to, uh, we would like to ensure that both type one and type two actually one, um, uh, uh, by their uh, intended uh, packages, which means uh, their intended packages are going to uh, be optimal for them. So the individual rationality constraint for type one and individual uh, incentive compatibility constraint for type one. So IR1 and IC1, those two constraints ensure that type one actually prefers to buy the package one because package one's uh, is, is best response to not buying anything because its utility is higher than zero or equal to. And buying the package is best response to sort of, or, or better response than buying package two because its utility is higher than uh, buying package two. So therefore, buying package one is the best response, the optimal strategy for type one. Similarly, Incentive, uh, individual rationality constraint of type two and incentive compatibility constraint of type two ensures that buying package two is the optimal strategy for type two. So given that buying package one is optimal for type one, buying package two is optimal strategy for type two, given those optimal strategies, what is the optimal strategy X1, P1, X2, P2 that maximizes the uh, uh, b b b monopolist profit, all right? So uh, remember in the previous uh, episode, uh, if you want to know the details, we argued that the individual, uh, I'm sorry, the, yeah, the incentive compatibility constraint of the highest type, in our case, it is uh, type one. It has to be binding, meaning it's going to be equal to and individual rationality constraint of the lowest type, which is type two in our case, should must also be binding. So it must be equal to zero. And the third statement was, given that IR2 and IC1 are binding, IR1 and IC2 uh, will be satisfied, meaning they're going to be greater than, strictly greater than. So that means the maximization pro in this maximization problem, you can actually ignore the individual rationality constraint of type one because it's not going to be binding. So you can always ignore them. And the in individual incentive compatibility constraint of the, of, of the second type, because again, it's not binding. And so uh, you can ignore that from your optimization problem. So therefore, your optimization problem will be reduced down to maximize this again by choosing x1 p1 x2 p2 subject to only two constraints and this time they are uh you know e these constraints are with equality so again how can i solve this you can write down the lagrangian there's going to be two lagrange uh, multiplier and then solve the first order conditions and find x1 p1 x2 p2 but there is a simpler way of doing it how so the substitution method by using the individual rationality constraint of the second type, you can just write P2 as equal to 3X2, all right? And then once you plug this back here, you can write P1 as uh, 4 squared of X1 minus 4 squared of X2 plus P2, which is equal to 3 squared of X2. So therefore, P1 is equal to 4 squared of X1 minus square root of x2, all right? So if you plug those two back into my objective function, your optimization problem will actually become the following. Maximize uh, one half p1, which is equal to four square root of x1 minus square root of x2 minus 0.5 x1. So p1 vanishes. So I reduce the number of unknowns 
in my objective function, and then one half p2, which is equal to uh, 3 squared of x2 minus 0.5 x2. All right, p2 is also vanishes, and so I maximize this by choosing x1 and x2 because p1, p2 are no longer here. And I do not have to worry about my constraints because they are already incorporated into my uh, objective function. Again, this is a method what we, that we call uh, a substitution method. You just substitute those incentive, uh, I'm sorry, constraints into your objective function. So the question is, how do I maximize this function with two parameters? Well, simple, the first order conditions. What does that mean? That means because there are two parameters, x1 and x2, you take the partial derivative with respect to x1, set it equal to zero, and then you take the partial derivative with respect to x2, set it equal to zero, solve those inequalities, and find x1 and x2 values. Um, and I'm sorry, I just erased, that was my mistake, uh, p1 was equal to 4 squared of x1 minus x2, and p2 was equal to 3 squared of x2. Because uh, once I find x1 and x2, I'm going to plug them back here to find the value of p1 and p2. So the first order conditions are the derivative with respect to x1 is this. Don't forget those one half. So one half uh, derivative of 4 squared of x1 means 4 divided by 2, x1 to the power of minus 1 half, minus x2, its derivative with respect to x1 is just 0, minus 0 0.5, all right? And the derivative of this part with respect to x2, uh, x1, I'm sorry, is just 0. So that's equal to uh, 0, okay? Um, so the second uh, first order condition is derivative with respect to x2. Well, this time, 1 half, uh, it's just minus 1 over 2 x2 to the power minus 1 half uh, plus 1 half uh, 3 divided by 2 x2 to the power minus 1 half minus 0.5 equal to 0. So let's solve them. So if you solve the first one, so this 1 half uh, multiply both times by 0, okay, so 1 half is irrelevant. So if you send this to the other side, you're going to have 2 divided by square root of x1 equals 1 over 2, right? 0 0.5 is equal to 1 over 2. So I send it to the other side, so it becomes plus. So therefore, x1 square root of x1 is equal to 4. So x1 is equal to 16. Oh, OK. Very good. Well, what about x2? So here, you know, multiply both sides by 2. So 0 times 2 is 0. All right, send this guy to the other side. So what I'm going to have, therefore, is the following. Uh, 1 over 2 squared of x2 uh, plus 0.5 equals 3 over 2 squared of x2. All right, so I want to multiply both sides by 2. So I get rid of this. This becomes 1. I get rid of this as well. I multiply both sides by square root of x2. So I get rid of this guy. So 1 plus square root of x2 equals... 3. So square root of x2 is equal to 2, so x2 is equal to 4. Very good. So therefore, in these two packages, Monopolist is going to offer a pack of 16 bottles of waters, and in the second package, there's going to be not 9, but 4 bottles of waters. Well, what about the prices? Well, the P1, remember, is equal to square root of, uh, I'm sorry, 4 times square root of x1, so 4 squared of uh, 16 minus squared of uh, x2, which is 4. So therefore, P1 is going to be 16 minus 2, 14. So the price is going to be lower and uh, price of package 1, lower than the, best, uh, the first best. If you remember, uh, 16 pack, well, the price was 16, but now it's going to be 14. Well, what about here? The P2 is going to be 3 times square root of x2. So it's uh, 3 times 2, 6. All right. Okay, so finally, what is the profit of the monopolist? Um, let's summarize all this thing here. Um, in the second best, therefore, the monopolist is going to offer two packages. In these two packages, in the first package, which is intended for type 1 guy, 
it's going to include 16 bottles of waters and the price will be 14 and the second package there will be um, four bottles of water and the price will be six so the profit of the monopolist expected profit of the monopolist is going to be remember it's it's there there there's not there's no two customers there's one customer two types so i'm taking expectation one half probability it's going to be the type one guy so p minus p 14 minus 0.5 times x right remember this is the profit so eight plus one half p minus p2 minus 0.5 times four which is two so therefore this is uh six divided by two three and this is four divided by two two so it's five so if you remember the monopolist profit in the first best was um i forget it but either uh eight i guess let me check if the consumer is type one well then the monopolist profit was eight and if the consumer was type two the monopolist was uh monopolist profit was 4.5 and then we looked at the scenario where monopolist cannot distinguish the types in the end, if the monopolist offers the first best packages, meaning 16-16, meaning 16 pack of uh, bottled water at a price 16 and nine uh, pack of bottled water at a price nine. So if these are the offers, well, then the monopolist expected profit would be 4.5 because both type one and type two would buy the package too. However, by rearranging or reshuffling the packages, uh, or sort of uh, reshuffling the prices, the monopolist can achieve higher profit than 4.5. So what are those packages? Well, uh, keep the quantity same, 16 units of uh, uh, you know, bottled water, but lower the price to $14. You need to lower it because otherwise type one is gonna buy package of two, all right? And in the second package, you decline the uh, uh, number of bottles and also the price uh, but if you I mean if you look at here the per uh, the price per bottle water is here more than one dollar you see and here it is less than a dollar uh, oh I'm sorry here it is more than a dollar because six divided by four is I mean 1.5 dollars per bottle and here the price is less than a dollar so basically what happens here is the monopolist is making profit from, uh, you know, uh, the monopolist is increasing its profit. I mean, it's not profit, but uh, per unit profit. Let's think it this way. A monopolist increases the per unit profit from the uh, type two customers by charging a higher price, a higher per unit price, but it decreases the uh, per unit profit from the type one customer, uh, all right? But by offering these two packages, monopolist can actually get a profit higher than the profit if he just offers the first best packages, all right? So that's it. This is how we solve the second best in this problem. Well, obviously uh, you may worry about, I mean, third best fourth best but here third best fourth best means you put you know much more constraints like for example the uh, per item prices should be in this range for example or something else all right some other constraints and all those other constraints are going to uh, decline the mono uh, monopolist profit all right so don't 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 forget that so the second best is basically the best profit, the highest profit the monopolist can achieve under this incomplete or asymmetric information case. And how do you achieve this profit? By suggesting two packages. One is intended for type one customers, one is intended for type two customers. Once monopolist offer these two packages, in fact, if the customer is type one customer, he's going to buy this package rather than this package. You can verify this. How so? U1, 1614, 
versus U1, uh, 4, 6. So remember the utility of the uh, type 1 guy was this, 4 squared of x minus p. So therefore, it's going to be 4 times squared of 16, so 16 minus 14, so utility 2. So if he buys his own package, package 1, his utility will be 2 units. However, if he buys the other package, the second package, his utility will be 4 times 2, 8 minus 6. It's 2 again. So you know what? Buying his own package is no worse than buying the second package. So it is optimal strategy for him to buy his package, okay? And by the way, this is expected. If you remember the optimization problem, we said incentive compatibility constraint of the type one uh, is gonna be binding. So his utility of buying package one and package two should be the same, all right? And by the way, those utilities are higher than zero. That means buying his own package is profitable you know, the best response or better response than not buying anything. Well, what about consumer two? The consumer two, or I'm sorry, type two, if he buys the, uh, the first package, his utility is going to be 12 minus 14. So it's minus two. He definitely doesn't want to buy this. But if he buys his own package, so it's going to be 3 times square root of 4, so it's a, uh, 3 times 2, 6 minus 6, so it's 0. So buying his own package is at least as good as not buying anything, and it's definitely better than buying package 1. So therefore, uh, given that the monopolist offers these two packages, both type 1 and type 2 will buy their intended packages, and the monopolist is going to make the highest profit that he can achieve. All right, so that's how we solve uh, a sort of a standard example of hidden information uh, scenarios.